As you might know already, this is the Spherene toolbar where you can create a project, set field points, modify geometries and actually compute. This will generate a layer structure that will be then sent for computation. We reflect this in a couple of grasshopper nodes. For example, this one will populate the layer structure as needed. You can input meshes and field data. Here I have a toggle where I can activate this node. So if your node setup gets a little bit bigger, this helps. Also, we have some tooltips going on where you see what kind of inputs are accepted and what these inputs are doing. In some node inputs, you can use multiple inputs for the env and df and for example, only one mesh is allowed. That's the first node. Then the second one is the boundary object preparation. Also, it accepts a input geometry and the boundary modifier, so-called, creates partial or full hulls or walls in, inside an uh, envelope. Here you see all the settings, also with some nice descriptions, what these settings are doing. Below here, we got the point clouds to Serene, so that's just a parser that accepts positions of points in space with values and outputs it in a point cloud format that we can read and input as field data. Here on the left side, you see all these bluish nodes. These are the generators for the example. Very simple, we generate a box. Then this box will be used three times, one time as the envelope and one time as a defeatured envelope and one time we dissect this object into multiple phases to generate a bounding geometry. Here below, we see different ways how to create a point cloud. So a very simple one. Then we can use a panel node to maybe test something, pipe it through. This we use two times, one time we use it here for density. So you see X, Y, Z and the value. This last one value is just here used for density and here it is used for the wall thickness. Then, of course, you can use this format, put it into a text file, a CSV file, and then right click here, import this CSV file and use the result of that to drive our field. That's all there is to, to it for the example. Let's actually see how, how we can use it. So most important thing, we have to first start with the project name. So here we start with this name here. Then we activate this node. Everything that we pipe in here now will be reflected in real time and updated. So if I take a node away, uh, it will also update the layer structure. Most important thing, we need one envelope mesh where we fill this envelope geometry with Spherene. Let's do that. Immediately we see that we have our project name, our meshes layer containing this envelope mesh. We see our first mesh. Let's go back to Grasshopper. All right, let's see how we could generate just a constant field. I enter just a number slider, put it into the density, for example, then copy this guy here, put it into thickness to tell it to have a wall thickness of 0.4. See that we now have created this point here and this point inside of the density and thickness fields. And that's the moment where I can now hide the input mesh here and make a first computation. Click on this compute button. We create a single surface and a solid uh, surface just for fun. Color it and compute it. Computation has started. We have the output folder here and we are waiting for a result coming back. Here we see we are soon ready. Computation is done and let's shade this viewport so that we see. Oops, that was the wrong one. Let's go. That's the 
fastest way to do it. But there is not a lot of fun because now we have a constant field that would be cool in most of situations. But if we want to make some fancy stuff with this geometry, we can do a lot more. Watch now these fields layers as I delete these inputs. So you see automatically it has updated this part. Let's hide the output here. What we do next is Let's populate all the mesh inputs. We input a defeatured envelope to see what that does. What it is, it is just this box here that we create as, as envelope. Then I take the same box and scale it up in X direction. So you see it is a little bit wider in X. What this means now, the spherine normally grows inside any geometry you, you provide and will produce these kind of volcanoes on, on the faces it, it hits. The defeatured envelope that is now wider, imagine this, that now in the defeatured envelope the structure will grow on this defeatured envelope and will then be cut out by this initial envelope. Here for example we expect to have on four sides still volcanoes and here we will have a section as a result. But let's check out if this is true. I take the output of this scaled geometry here, put it into DFNV. Now we have two meshes here. One is the DFNV and one is the envelope. Let's compute that to see what's going on. I turn off the single surface as we do not need it. I now have deleted these field points. I reintroduce them. Let's do 5.6 and 0.4 as we had before. Input that and recompute. We should not get any error message anymore. Of course, you can work on and start multiple computations. Here for presentation sake, I, I wait for the results to come back. So what happened here is this object here is the one that our structure has grown onto. This object here was the cutter, so to say, that cut through our structure. So you can specify how you want to have this outside look. All right, let's hide this again and proceed now to our boundary meshes. So what I take here, I split up the input mesh into different faces. We have this L shape here. With each of these faces, I will do different things. And as you see, I have left open two faces to be like still porous. So I take all these meshes here, pipe them into our boundary modifier. With the first one, with this one, with the L shape, we do the following. We set a hull thickness. so. This will be like a thickened up wall of 1.6 millimeters here. Target thickness means our structure will grow onto this wall and will thicken up over a distance of 2 millimeters to 2.5 millimeters. And these toggles front and back face, we will see the result in the visualization that explains what these do. Basically, they close up or leave openings on either of the volume side the front face or the back face. For this one here, I did exactly that. I did turn off and on one of these front and back faces. And here I did the opposite. So we have like three objects. One is the L shape that has a full wall and these two have partial walls and the rest will be porous open. All right, now that we have set up our boundary modifiers, uh, let's put them into the boundaries uh, input node and using shift I can enter multiple uh, meshes into this node here. So let's inspect what happened by computing it again. So and during the computation I will delete these two fields because I do not need them anymore. Uh, as we are starting to input uh, our field points from Grasshopper, from these nodes below here. 
So what happened now with the boundary modifier? You see we closed up this L shape. We closed here only one side of the faces and on the other side we closed the opposites like all these volcanoes. If my boundary geometry would not be as, as, as here the full face but for example like a smooth uh, shape going through this volcano we can have parts of this volcano open and then where the boundary geometry goes through it will close up so you can make a lot of interesting things so that's all of that combined let's hide this result let's deal now with uh, density and thickness fields uh, let's take this one here I already prepared it. I know that my box is like uh, 100 by 100 by 20. I placed some points, two points. One is 5.6 and the other one is 11. Let's now see when it pipes through here. This is our density. I put it in here. Let's visualize this. Let's see. See the envelope. All right. Okay, so we have these, these two points up here. I do the same for the thickness. Here I prepared two points uh, diagonally. One is 0.4 millimeter and one is two millimeters. Let's get this up here into the thickness. We expect now a gradient. Let's verify. Hide the mesh here again. The third one, that's this guy here. We will be using a single point for a cavity. A cavity point has a radius, so imagine it being a sphere that will push away our minimal surface. So this one has now a radius of 30. I will take the output here. Hope I hit it. And put it into the cavity. So that's like right in the middle here. Let's see what we got back from the, from the gradient. Let's first uh, maybe start the computation for the next result. Let's go. I hide this so when it comes back that we don't see it. So what we have here, we change the density from 5.6. As you see, it gets denser to the left here to 11 and all very organic. Then we have in the diagonal axis here, 0.4 millimeters to 2 millimeters and you see everything looks really smooth. We combined something that is actually really complicated to create otherwise. And now we introduced this cavity point here. So let's see the result of that. Maybe take a bigger look there. See, we have everything combined together. And the cool thing is there, I can now clip through this. And you see that this is all one object. You do not need to Boolean anything afterwards or make some complicated uh, operations. You can now go further with this object in design or use this directly to print. So check it out. We would be really happy to welcome you on Discord and receive your feedback on the grasshopper uh, iteration that we did here. That's it for today. Have a great day. Bye.